Well, here we are again, and we're going to discuss cross-sectional anatomy of the chest. So here I start out on lung windows, give you a little bit of an overview, give you right off the bat that there is an abnormality here, and it looks very suspicious for a neoplasm, typical of a primary bronchogenic carcinoma, primary lung cancer, that is, in the right lung apex. And the little irregularities and the little uh, lines emanating from it are typical of primary lung cancer and not as common among metastatic lesions. Metastatic lesions to the lungs tend to be smoothly marginated uh, and they don't usually have this kind of appearance of tethering of the adjacent tissues. Okay, so let's look at the lobes of the lung first. So we're in the upper lobes here and now we're getting into the lower lobe on the left. So here's left upper lobe, left lower lobe. And that makes this the fissure. Okay, this is the left major fissure. Remember, there's only a major fissure on the left. And it courses obliquely, and we'll see that better on the sagittal images, how as you go down, it is more and more anteriorly positioned. Okay, and this would be the area of the lingula of the left upper lobe. The corresponding area on the right would be the right middle lobe. So here's right lower lobe here. Here's the major fissure on the right, right major fissure, left major fissure. So the right major fissure separates the right lower lobe from the right middle lobe at this point. And then if we go up a little higher, we suddenly lose those markings. They all seem kind of not as linear and not typical of blood vessels as you see over here. So when you get to the level of the major of the minor fissure itself and you cut tangentially through it, then you are cutting through the fissure itself and you don't get big vessels right at the level of the fissure. You'll see that more clearly when we go to sagittal images. But you can still follow the right major fissure, which is here now. A little hard to see, but as you see, it's here. And a lot of times what it is, is what you don't see. That you have all these long markings in a nice pattern, and that is kind of lost right here at the major fissure. And, and here, too. On the left, it so happens that you have a, sh a more sharply defined major fissure. Uh, so remember on the left, then you have left lower lobe and left upper lobe with a small little tongue-like protrusion from the left upper lobe, which is the lingula, whereas on the right you have three lobes. You have the right lower lobe, which is all of this that the arrow is pointing to here, the right upper lobe, and then you have a middle lobe. And right now you're thinking, I just don't see it. Well, that's because you need to look at it in the sagittal plane or coronal plane, and let's see what this gives us. Hmm. Okay, now here's a coronal view showing the right upper lobe lesion that I think is probably a primary lung cancer. And then as you go forward from there, look at the fissures on the right. Oh, this is not working as well as I had hoped here. Coming into some difficult... I think those are incomplete series of images, but let's see if... Okay, here we go. This is the classic display of the right lung showing right upper lobe, right lower lobe, and right middle lobe. This is the anterior. The patient is facing that way. So here you have the major fissure and the minor fissure. So if someone said what separates the left upper lobe from the left lower lobe, it would be the major fissure. What separates the right, I'm sorry, this is the right upper lobe and right lower lobe is separated by the major fissure, but so is the left. But on the right you also have a middle lobe, so here you have an actual fissure, the minor fissure, that separates the right upper lobe from the right middle lobe. 
So if you imagine the plural space as being a potential space, you think of pneumothorax as occurring around the lung, but actually it occurs in all of the, the plural surfaces of the lung. So these lobes will often fall apart, I mean fall apart from one another, and you'll have air, in the case of a pneumothorax, going into the major fissure and minor fissure. Okay, so now if we go out laterally, you can see that the right minor fissure, or the minor fish, the mi right middle lobe tapers as you go out laterally. And here's the right upper lobe and right lower lobe. So major fissure, minor fissure, right upper lobe, right middle lobe, right lower lobe. So get that clear in your mind and try to imagine how it would look in other planes because you don't usually start out with sagittal images and a lot of times we get by without using them at all. They are helpful for problem solving sometimes, but they're not the first images to go to in most cases. So here on the left side, we just have a major fissure and a left upper lobe and a left lower lobe. And we also have a little lingula where the left upper lobe kind of extends a little bit in an area comparable to the right middle lobe, but on the left. Okay, now let's get into some of the meaty anatomy here. Let's take a look. Oh, we're in the sagittal plane. That makes this the manubrium and the sternum. This is the sternomanubrial joint. These are the thoracic vertebrae. All of them look pretty good, and these are the spinous processes of the thoracic vertebra. Here is a great vessel emanating from the heart, and that would be the aorta, the thoracic aorta. This is the ascending thoracic aorta. Okay, and here you see some irregularity in the wall, portions of which are calcified. So that's atheromatous plaque in the wall of the thoracic aorta. And the aorta gives rise to what are often called the great vessels. And they include three vessels. All right, and we can see those better on the coronals. And they are the right, or the brachiocephalic artery. It's not called right because there is no left brachiocephalic artery, unlike the case with the veins. So here you have the right brachiocephalic artery, and then as we go off to the left, you have a left carotid artery, left common carotid artery, and a left subclavian artery. And we'll see those better in another projection. What about this stuff right here? Now, this is an interesting picture because it shows the main pulmonary artery, the left main pulmonary artery, going right under the aorta. So here you have the right ventricle. Look how that looks. See, the right ventricle is, is somewhat toward the right of the left ventricle, but really the right ventricle, it's more about being an anterior structure and the left ventricle being more posteriorly positioned. Okay, so here, let's see. Here we have the right ventricle. It goes up. This is the right ventricular outflow tract. And after that, it branches into left pulmonary artery, right here. And then on the other side, right pulmonary artery. And this irregular appearing enhancing structure is the superior vena cava. And the reason it has that wavy kind of configuration and appearance is that you have the dense, dense contrast of pacified blood in the left subclavian vein mixing with and meeting and mixing with the unopacified blood in the right subclavian vein and that's what gives this the heterogeneous appearance that it has because of mixing of left and right subclavian venous tributaries and that below that is where this all, all this, this mixing occurs 
is in the superior vena cava as it goes down to the right atrium to allow this returned systemic blood to become reoxygenated. So it goes into the it goes into the right atrium, which is a little more laterally positioned. Then as we go toward the midline, you find yourself in the right ventricle. And that goes out the right ventricle here anteriorly to one of the two main pulmonary arteries, either to the left main pulmonary artery or to the right main pulmonary artery. Okay, and then it goes through the lungs and goes to the alveoli, etc., where the blood is oxygenated, returns in the pulmonary veins, and where do you think the pulmonary veins go? Well, they go to the left atrium and left ventricle and then out the aorta. So here you have the left main pulmonary artery with two pulmonary veins right near it, and those are conveniently located next to the left atrium. So when you go toward the midline, you see these left pulmonary veins forming a confluence and joining the left atrium. And from the left atrium, they enter the left ventricle, which you can identify as the, the cavity of the heart that has the thickest wall, the most thick muscular wall. So here is a nice profile showing the right ventricle and the left ventricle. The left ventricle having this thicker wall all the way around it and the right ventricle being kind of a more vertically oriented structure that has an outflow into the, as it, as it goes through the pulmonic valve, it goes through the pulmonary outflow tract, which is this segment here, and then it branches into the left main pulmonary artery and the right main pulmonary artery. Okay, so this is a kind of novel approach to learning it because I think the sagittal plane, unlike with most other things, the sagittal plane really gives you a clear picture of the relationships of these structures. So here you can see also how the, the main pulmonary artery branches into left and right main pulmonary arteries right under the aortic arch. And there's a good reason for that. The aorta and pulmonic arteries and aortic and pulmonary arteries are in utero, in development, obtained from one common vessel. So there's one big vessel which is divided longitudinally, but not just not just a longitudinal division like this, but it's done so in a way that the, the dividing plane rotates as you go from proximal to distal in this area that is divided to make the aorta and the pulmonary artery. And that's an explanation for why you see the, the movements of the pulmonary artery and aorta when you scan through the mediastinum like this. And we can see that nicely in another example here, same patient. Here you have the aortic arch. Let's see what the best window here, okay. Here's the, here's the aortic arch, and this is the SVC. Why is it denser than the aorta? That would be a question for, that I would put on an exam. And the reason is the injected contrast is, as mo is most concentrated right where it's being injected into the venous system, which is what drains into the SVC. So whether it's left brachiocephalic, vessels or right, uh, you're, all of that is going to go to the
the SVC. So here you can see how this very dense contrast comes in, let's see, this probably going in through, oh, it looks like they've got a, 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 a line there, a central line. So it goes right into that left subclavian vein and then joins the right subclavian vein over here to form the SVC. And if you look closely there, you can usually see some mixing. You can see this is denser than this area. So the SVC doesn't always have very homogeneous high attenuation, but it does have very, very high attenuation. Whereas the blood that comes back to the aorta has already been out there in the system and mixed with unopacified blood. And so it's a little more dilute. Here's the trachea, the esophagus behind it. And here are some of the great vessels. So these two vessels should be right subclavian and right common carotid artery. And so they should join to form the brachiocephalic artery, which comes off the aorta. And it's the first root, first branch coming off the aorta, and that's this. Okay, down, up and you have the left brachiocephalic vein kind of wrapping around that structure. So that's the brachiocephalic artery that gives rise to the right common carotid artery and right subclavian artery. The next vessel is the left common carotid artery which goes up into the neck and gives rise of course to the left common carotid and or I'm sorry, it gives rise to the left internal carotid and left external carotid artery. And then here you have the left subclavian vein, which is the third vessel off the aortic arch that gives rise to the left subclavian artery. That's it. And it goes off into the axilla where it supplies the left upper extremity. So this is the superior mediastinum. And this is a good picture that I would use for a test to say, what's this? It's the, let's see, it's the, in that case, it's, it's, this is actually the right brachiocephalic vein because the left brachiocephalic vein is densely opacified and it's here that the superior vena cava form just inferior to this level where you have unopacified right and opacified left. Here you have the SVC becoming opacified and here you have the aortic arch and we know now that the pulmonary artery is right inferior to the aortic arch because they were together at one point and then that plane came between them and divided them in this manner and sometimes you can actually kind of see that twisting as you go through the two of them you can see how they kind of twist in relationship to one another. Ascending aorta, descending thoracic aorta. Here are some normal little lymph nodes probably, not really prominent. And this is the main pulmonary artery giving rise to the right and left main pulmonary arteries. Now this is a beautiful portrayal of the left atrium and left ventricle with the valve leaflets tethered by the chordae tendinia, which are connected with the papillary muscles as we discussed on another case. And this is where the aorta originates. So returning blood from the lungs comes to the left atrium from the right lung, the left atrium from the left lung. So this is all oxygenated blood comes into the left atrium and here you can see the valve leaflets opening into the aorta and that, I'm sorry, into the left ventricle. And that left ventricle has this strong muscular wall that pumps it and forces it into the aorta, through the aortic valve into the thoracic aorta. And that is given a great deal of power because it has to, you need a high pressure in that aortic the proximal aorta 
in order to perfuse the whole body. Remember, you have got to perfuse every capillary bed in the body, so you need a lot of oomph to do that. So here you can see left atrium, left ventricle, and aortic outflow tract. And this is around, this is where the aortic valve would be located. Here's the ascending aorta. And you see how it nicely, it's, it fits into the uh, right lateral aspect of the main pulmonary artery. Again, that's because it started out as one. Those two were one, and a septum came between them. And actually, this is kind of where you can see that rotation of that septum. It's here, and then it's here, and then it's here. See how you're kind of moving clockwise from this perspective, at least, and then you're over here. And then here it has a little more angle that. So the relationship of the aorta, the ascending aorta, and the main pulmonary artery changes a little bit in this clockwise motion because of the division of the single vessel, which gives rise to both the aorta and pulmonary artery. I've never talked so much about that embryology, and I'll never do it again either. But it's important to know. Right mainstem bronchus, left mainstem bronchus. Don't forget to look at those things because you can see little tiny nodules and masses and partially obstructing lesions in the bronchi in cases that are well imaged like this. Okay. So there we've, we've seen the axial and the sagittal uh, here we have the coronal coronal showing here look at this beautiful left ventricular cavity papillary muscles going through the valve the aortic valve into the ascending aorta the ascending aorta arches over the superior mediastinum and then dives down as the descending thoracic aorta and you know the aortic arch of course gives rise to the brachycephalic artery which in turn gives rise to the left common or the, the right common carotid artery and the right subclavian artery whereas the left subclavian artery and left common carotid artery both come off directly from the more distal aortic arch Okay, and here you have the SVC getting its opacified blood from the left uh, arm injection or left subclavian vein injection and mixing with unopacified blood from the right blood, right side, giving this heterogeneous appearance here. Now if we can get some lung windows here, we'll see how the major fissure on the left and right look quite similar. The difference being that on the right, on the right you also have this structure, the, the middle lobe. Okay, here's the carina right and left main stem bronchi. Look in those bronchi. You'll pick up an early lung cancer once in your career, maybe. Okay, that's it.